Looks kind of like the thumbnail, right? That thumbnail is a benign tumor, but its presence could signal another cancer brewing even when young. Seeing this in the article we'll talk about later in the video really stressed me out. Is this cancer? Is a question I often got from patients, family, friends. I never thought I'd be asking you of myself. Pause. Okay, that opening was a little too serious even for me. Here's me playing with my baby to lighten the mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like flying? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Basically, this video is about my recent one and only cancer scare. And of course, it was dermatology, which is my worst subject for good reason. And I'll show you why in a second. The short of the story was I was at work on my phone for a moment and I ran into an article with a picture that looked similar to something I got on my fingers all the time. More on that in a little bit. If you think I'm too young to get cancer because I'm in my 30s, you're going to be in for a surprise too. Now, during that moment after, I felt a real empathy for patients, friends, family that come to me with worries that they might have cancer all the time because it is scary. Now. Where are my old derm notes for boards? Maybe I'll save myself some time for research on this video? Yeah. I was running out of time studying for derm on boards, so I winged it. And in my defense, it worked out fine till I thought I had cancer. But anyways, I can show you some real behind the scenes research quick right now, and then we'll get into the rest of the fun. Research montage. Montage, montage, gonna make a montage, bam. 79%. That is the increase in cancer incidence in young people since 1990. As older people have been getting cancer less, the rates of young people getting cancer is actually taking quite the opposite trend. Why is not clear? There's a lot of research going into that question right now, and researchers have possibly found a link with a certain type of nail problem called an anechopapilloma and some of these cancers. This link may explain why some young people are predisposed to cancers like melanoma, kidney cancer, or mesothelioma. I was on my shift, and amidst all the admits and demands for sleep aids and present to bedside for sedated or confused patients, you are sleeping because they were sleepy. I had a free moment, and I stumbled across this article in a recent publishing in JAMA Dermatology about an ecopapilloma and the possibility of the underlying danger that these benign growths can represent. Seeing the picture with the article had me worried. It kind of looked like the things I sometimes got on my fingers randomly all the time that I thought nothing of. But then reading the article freaked me out more. Okay, anechopathilomas. Turns out they might be linked to a little known tumor suppressor gene known as BAP1. When mutated, it meant almost definitely having or developing cancer. So was that what was on my fingernail? Well, going through Dermnet, they also could look like this and these. They also could look like these. And what I found is more often than not, they're going to actually come with red lines under the nails from hemorrhages. And that's not really uncommon to have so many different ways that like one skin condition can present. That's really what we call derm life. With derm life, there's a lot of variants from person to person. An ecopapillomas, papillomata? Also, looking at Google, it's just papilloma. An ecopapilloma, plural and singular words, man. An ecopapilloma have largely been seen as benign growths that people can ignore. They are relatively rare, and I ignored them so much that as a hospitalist, I forgot what they even were since taking my boards. Uh, what can I say? My interest in dermatology has always been pretty skin deep. Okay. So was this thing on my nail a version of that or what? I spent the next 10 minutes or so confirming that no, it wasn't cancer. That original article though was pretty bad and seemed to suggest honestly that 88% of the patients with these anechopapilloma also had BAP1 mutations. Or honestly, maybe it's just poorly phrased and I was a little bit alarmed and worried looking in the moment. The article described anechopapilloma as minor thickening of the nail bed. 
probably making it intentionally vague to make people concerned that it can happen to them. And it didn't even link the study. Big red flag. So I had to go searching for it. Now, looking at the actual research study, that was more clearly not the case. What they actually found was that patients over 30 that they tested that came back positive for BAP1 mutations also had multiple anechopapilloma under multiple nails. That may seem like a small difference. It's really a big difference because one makes something pretty common, the other makes something really rare. Anico papilloma are really rare. To have more than one in a lifetime seems to be even rarer. I was also able to find this, finally confirming my suspicion that true Anico papilloma are under the nail and rarely look like the surface issue that I got on occasion. Then what was this thing on my nail? Uh, I had to get back to work, so. I didn't get a chance to look into that more until I got home. I did more digging at home and what I found was it is something called leukonychia punctata. And this is a common finding that can happen with random low-grade nail trauma. My baby probably smacked me on the hand at some point or something. She hits me a lot, but you know, a lot of times the bruises don't show. More confirmation that I don't have cancer. To briefly talk about that 79% increase in young people getting cancer, it's a scary thing that it's unfortunately really true. Even just earlier in this month, I had three patients in less than a week from their 30s to 50s that had different forms of cancer. And unfortunately, the person in their 50s died. The medical community isn't exactly sure of the exact cause, but the major suspicion, major players for consideration are ultra processed foods and obesity, PFAs, microplastics, or something that we just haven't been able to find or see yet. The best thing you can do to protect yourself is avoiding at least the ultra processed food part. Food companies spend a lot of money to make sure that you are confused as possible to know what is exactly ultra processed versus processed versus fresh and just try to get you to buy their crap. But when I make that video, I'll link it here. I'm just glad I don't have cancer.